Grace, mercy, and peace are yours. From God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, this despair that we've talked about today, despair isn't something that happens instantly. It's not something that you just wake up and you feel despair one day. It, it happens gradually over time. It's the kind of thing that happens when you thought things were supposed to be one way, and hopefully a good way, but not only did they not turn out that way, but they've gotten worse and worse. And when I say despair, I don't necessarily mean clinical depression, although that could include despair. I mean that feeling that anyone could feel when it just seems like the things that they hoped would happen just aren't happening. That despair can creep into our hearts. In fact, one definition that I found for despair pretty much calls it that. It said that despair is the absence of hope. You know, hope is when there's something that hasn't happened yet. It's out in the future, and you just know it's going to happen, and when that happens, it's going to make things better. But when you don't have hope for anything better out there, that's when that sinking feeling of despair can set in. But of course, none of us would feel that, right? After all, we're celebrating Easter, right? This is the time when we say, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed, and it's true. I mean, how could we despair when we know that Jesus is alive? How could we despair when we know that Jesus' life means our forgiveness? I mean, we could never despair when we know that God is going to keep all his promises, when we know that Jesus is always with us, when we know that God works out everything for our good. Despair can't touch us, right? Well, the thing is, we can know those things in our head, but, but sometimes they don't make their way into our hearts. And I suppose there's different reasons why that can happen. And this time that we're living right now, this time of locking ourselves away out of safety for ourselves and for others, it can kind of wear on us. It's one of those things where we are all for protecting people, we're all for flattening the curve, whatever you want to call it, but sometimes it, it's hard when it keeps going on. And sometimes there's that hope that, hey, maybe things will, maybe we're going to turn a corner and things are going to start getting better and this, this can all just be a, a, a memory of something that happened in the past. But then it drags out more. And you almost feel bad for being upset by it. You know, how can we be upset when other people are sick? You know, we, we want to do everything we can so that people wouldn't get sick. But as it drags on and, and, and big milestones of life, you know, weddings. There's been, you know, socially distanced funerals that have had to happen. Uh, events that, that people aren't able to make or that have to get postponed. Things like graduations, confirmations. And, and there's a part of us that says, how is this going to work? You know, what's, what's the end result here? Where, where are we leading? And despair can creep in. And of course, if you're, if you're essential enough to have to be around people all the time right now, again, there's that, there's that dread of, is this just a countdown until sick? Or someone else I love gets sick? Am I going to accidentally be responsible for getting someone sick? And even if we know better, even though we know the truths of Easter, that despair can sort of creep into our lives. And that's why this morning... It's so important that we spend some time with Jesus. Because when we talk about Jesus, yes, we, we look at stories from the Bible of what Jesus did, but please realize that Jesus is not someone who exists only in the past. No, because he rose. He lives. Jesus is with us now. And it's because of that, it's because of Jesus' resurrection, that it can change the face of that despair that's so easy for us to feel. In fact, that's what we're going to be reminded of this morning. We're going to have Jesus 
gently command us, despair no more. And, and when Jesus tells us that, he's, he's not saying, pretend that there aren't any problems. He's not saying that, well, you can never be sad for anything. He's saying that because he's here, our reasons for despair maybe aren't as great as we think. And the blessings that he'd come to give us are so much greater than even the biggest trouble that we face. So in our text for today, we're, we're going back to the day of Easter. And that's one of those days that so many different things happened on that day. You know, it, it's amazing to look at the Bible and to see how many events happened in this one 24-hour period of time. And, and I feel like we're kind of going through a time in our lives where, where time seems to work strangely. You know, where, where one day can seem to go fast, but then a week can seem to take forever. I mean, I had, to che- I had to literally check the calendar to see, was Easter, the actual day of Easter, really just two weeks ago? It, it doesn't seem right. It seems way longer than that for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, but anyway, here we are, and we're looking at some events that happened on that Easter, and we're seeing some people who were, were traveling on that day. That same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. Now, we don't know much about the specifics here. Emmaus, all we know about the town of Emmaus is pretty much what's in these verses, that it's about seven miles from Jerusalem. We don't know much else. We don't know much about these disciples who were traveling there. Um, They weren't two of the 12 apostles. Um, One of them we know was named Cleopas, and we don't know anything else of him or, or who the other person was who was traveling that day. But we know what they were talking about, and that's really the important part. They, they were talking about everything that had happened, and of course, that's all about Jesus, right? These were people who were Jesus' followers, who had seen the things he had done, and now he was gone. But here's the thing. He wasn't really gone. They didn't realize at the time, but... But Jesus was alive, and and not only was he not gone, but he was with them. And in fact, he was going to be with them physically as their trip continued. So as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. Now again, we're not sure why God decided to do it this way. Why did he stop them from recognizing that this was Jesus? You know, or or why didn't Jesus come up and say something like, uh, you know, guys, hey, it's me. Uh, But he doesn't do that. He just kind of walks along and kind of blends himself into their conversation. And in so doing, he gets a chance to really teach them about everything he came to do as the Savior. And it's a great teaching opportunity for us, too. Because they're walking along, and he asks them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? It never uses the word despair here, but you can sort of sense that over these disciples. You know, it's like the worst thing has just happened, and now they're returning to their hometown of Emmaus, not in victory, but in defeat, right? Because Jesus is gone, and and doesn't, he, doesn't this man walking with them on the road, doesn't he know what happened? What things, Jesus asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was going to be the one who was going to redeem Israel. They knew a lot of things about Jesus. These were not two casual disciples who had heard a speech or two of Jesus once in a while and thought he was a pretty cool guy. No, they followed him. They said he was a prophet, powerful in word and deed. They knew what he taught. They knew about his miracles. But then you get these sad words of, we had hoped he was going to be the one who redeemed Israel. They seemed to know what Jesus came to do. He came to to buy God's people back from their sins. But they thought he was gone. And there's a part of us that says, well, they probably didn't know the thing about Jesus rising from the dead. They probably just had never heard that. Except it seems that they did hear that. 
because this is what they said next. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. So it seems that they had heard those words of Jesus when he said that after the third day, he would rise from the dead. That meant something to them, but it still wasn't clicking that Jesus may have actually done just that. And there's even more about what they had heard about Easter. You sort of think maybe they could have been in a better mood already, but they weren't, because listen to this. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. So they had already heard some of the big news of this first Easter day, right? Women had went to the tomb. They saw angels who said Jesus was alive. They saw the disciples who went to the tomb and and found that it was empty. And they're like, well, but Jesus wasn't there. It, It didn't even occur to them that maybe Jesus had kept his word all along. And it certainly didn't occur to them that Jesus was the guy that they were talking to. You know, it's kind of like you hear about in some movies, and sometimes it's a horror movie that you'd hear someone saying this, where where you see a character who's going to go into a bad situation, uh, and they're going to open the door, and, you know, the bad guy is right behind the door, and people will shout, you know, don't go in there. To the, to the person. They want to tell the person on the screen, you know, what are you doing? We sort of want to do that with these guys. You know, say, Jesus is right there with you, people. Just open your eyes and see it, right? That's, that's the message. Jesus is right there with you. But in a way, do we need someone to shout that at us once in a while today? Doesn't it change things if we would recognize that Jesus is right there with us, that he's not just a historical figure on the pages of a very old book, but that he's alive. And that not only has he promised to rise, did he promise to be with us, but he's actually kept those promises. Friends, that changes things. If despair is the absence of hope, well, knowing that Jesus is with us can give us hope. That's really our first main point. Jesus gives us hope, right? It gives us hope to know that, wait a minute, things can't be all bad. Things can't be the end of the world if Jesus is not only alive, but he's with me. That changes things. That gives us hope. And saying this doesn't, it's not meaning to say our problems are nothing or the struggles that we're going through that, oh, that's nothing. You should just forget about that. No, that, They can be really hard things. But knowing Jesus alive changes things. It can give us that that hope that we need. And again, this is just what Jesus promised. He said this a little bit later on when he said, surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. It's not just these guys on the road that day who got to be with Jesus. It's us, right? Jesus is right there with us. And that gives us hope. But we still yearn to understand better what's going on, right? We still want to know more about what Jesus is telling us, not just his presence, which is great, but to have him enlighten us a little bit. And and that's what he does for us, and that's also what he did for the people who were on their way to Emmaus in our text. Because Jesus said to them, how foolish you are, and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Now, we don't get the tone of voice that Jesus used when he said these words. I mean, you could sort of imagine someone kind of shouting this, you know, how foolish you are. But I just get the impression that he didn't exactly shout this at them. And he wasn't saying these things to belittle them. Yes, he was scolding them. But there's really a sense of love here because of what he goes on to say. He goes on to explain everything that God had said about what had to happen. Right? Were the disciples at fault? Should they have gotten it? Of course. I mean, we just said they knew everything that happened. They knew everything Jesus taught. They knew there was angels proclaiming he was alive. They knew he wasn't in the tomb, and they still didn't get it. And we're like, come on. And we can be the same way. But Jesus gently comes to us and says, 
Don't be so slow to understand, but let me teach you in the word. And that's what he does for these disciples in our text. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. So as they walked along here, Jesus went through what we would call the Old Testament and showed all the different ways that different things in the Old Testament were pointing at exactly what Jesus would accomplish. I mean, this is, that, this is the part that I always picture in that famous painting uh, about this, this particular Bible story, uh, The Road to Emmaus. And I don't know much about the, the painter of this, but you, maybe you've seen this painting before. And it's just, you know, the three people walking and it seems to be Jesus in the, in the middle and he's explaining something. And it just seems like I wish, you know, sometimes I wish that, that Luke recorded everything Jesus said so that we would get to walk through ourselves every, every bit of comfort that he gave them from the Old Testament about who he was, right? I mean, that's the greatest Bible study session ever, right? Walking there with Jesus. The thing is, we really don't need to have it recorded because we have the Old Testament, right? We, we have all this good news. And, and it's a reminder for us about why we do this, why, why we come together as a, as a church and go through the trouble of getting you to come online and watch this, it's because we need to continue to grow in God's word. Because Jesus gives us something there. Not just the hope of his presence, but Jesus gives us understanding. He comes to us in his word, because the whole Bible, Jesus told us, is a witness about him. And, and he explains to us who he is and what he's done. I mean, the fact that, that Jesus wouldn't stay dead, again, that was in the Old Testament, where it said, God will not let his holy one see decay in the Psalms. It's a reminder that Jesus wouldn't stay dead, but he would rise again. Again, all these other things about Jesus that we need to know today, that, that it's the same Savior that who is there in our text, who is with us today, that's a promise in God's word. That God has promised to work things out for our good, even things that don't seem like they could ever possibly be good, again, that's a promise from God's word. And when we stay in the word and let God give us that understanding, that's a blessing for us. Yeah, we weren't there in that painting to get to walk you know, on this road and, and hear Jesus open up the scriptures for us, but the scriptures are there for us. Right? So make use of the opportunities that we have to continue to grow in those scriptures. Because guess what? The more we understand, it's not like the more that we understand the scriptures, the worse we're going to feel. It's, it's the exact opposite. We're going to feel better the more we know because God spells out the things that we need to know that are a comfort for us. And that's really the last point we're making today. Jesus gives us comfort. Right? It's one thing to know he's there, it's another thing to understand what he's doing and to, to open the scriptures and hear about what Jesus is doing. All of that together is going to comfort us. Right? It, it comforts us in that despair that we can feel during things that are difficult in our lives. This is comfort that we need. And this is the comfort that these disciples needed and, and that they got. Because as they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. Then we hear that they, got, they started to have a meal with Jesus. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. So this whole time, they hadn't realized it was Jesus who was with them. And then right as he sits down, he's breaking the bread, just like he had several different times throughout the Gospels, that's when they recognize him, and then he disappears. Now, you might expect them to be kind of upset. Like, you know, Jesus, we just figured out who you were, and now you're gone. But it's interesting, right? When they, the first thing they say is not about being upset. They were comforted, realizing that, wait, that had been Jesus. The comfort finally kind of sank in for them, because they asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? 
Again, having that understanding from God's word gave them heartburn, but not, not a heartburn you get from eating bad food or something like that. A burning heart of comfort of knowing that, wait a minute, everything God said is true. Everything the word says, this means that he's alive. And if he's alive, then I'm going to live. And if he's alive, then my sins are forgiven. That comfort finally hit home for them. And hopefully it does for us too. The more we understand, the more comfort we feel. And guess what? When we feel comforted, that's when we get a chance to share that comfort with others. We see that happen at the end of our text. Right? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord is risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told how the, the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. So because they had this comfort now had, had hit home for them, they needed to run back to Jerusalem, seven miles or so, and share this good news. And it's the same thing for us. When someone's in despair, they're not much good to other people as far as being able to comfort someone else because when they're in despair, they need comfort, right? But once they've gotten it, right, once, like today, we have the privilege of knowing that Jesus is with us, that, that he's opened the scriptures for us to understand all of God's promises, he, that he keeps them and that he's going to keep them forever. Once we're comforted with that, we're going to want to share that comfort, that's one of the greatest blessings we have as believers is that having been comforted by our God, we get to share it with others. You probably know someone who's struggling right now for any number of different reasons. Maybe you'll have a chance to, to share why you feel comfort. Maybe you have a chance to share why the events of Easter so long ago still mean something. How it means something for you today and forever. Because guess what? There's despair in this world. There's difficulties that we all face. There's struggles that we all go through. We don't know when things will get better, right? Whatever those things happen to be. But we do know that Jesus is with us, right? We have that hope of his presence. We have the understanding that comes from his word, we have the comfort of knowing that he's kept all of God's promises and he's going to continue to do so. So friends, share that comfort with others and rejoice that that Jesus gives us that comforting command, despair no more. And then he gives us the power to put that despair away. And that he comforts us with knowing that he is risen, he is risen indeed, and he's not going anywhere. Amen. Amen.